this week on Hermitcraft. Is Cubfan135 secretly Morgan Freeman? Do not deviate from this idea. <laughs> okay. Howdy guys, Morgan Freeman here. Welcome back to Hermitcraft. Welcome to the Hermitcraft recap. My name is Pixel Riffs, our writer is Loy XP, and the Tangler is finally finished. It allows us to go around the corner and give the most awkward high five. <laughs> <laughs> After much red stonery and monkey business, Tango Tech has completed the last two rooms of his puzzle playground, and some hermits have already tried it out with varying results. So far, the teams of Azuma and Wells Knight, as well as Impulse and Zedaf, have released videos of themselves taking on the Tangler. As with the last season, we will be doing a compilation of their best moments at some point later, so no spoilers for now. And with that out of the way, let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Starting with Iskal, who drags Stress Monster out of her sick bay in order to collab on the orc side of Fred the Kingdom minigame. The first job is to make a tunnel so they can get there, resulting in the laziest prank on Rendog you've ever seen. You blocked this up? Yeah, I did. Oh, that's Ren's tunnel. He will probably... Maybe no, I wanted to confuse him. Oh, okay. All right, well, fair enough. This is what he will do. <laughs> this, was, this is the this impression. Uh... Uh, uh. <laughs> but once they get to work, they pull an all-nighter to improve the top side of the Orc Fortress, and the paths are looking pretty special. He also seems to have bred a species of dog that can smell diorite through solid rock. What is your problem, dude? Is there diorite behind there? It... Yeah, there is. I see. I see. Good dog. Impulse SV must also have pulled an all-nighter to get the water cleared out from the area around his base. Luckily for us, he recorded it with the replay mod so we don't have to watch it in real time. Being outside the bounding box of the monument though, it doesn't take long for the mobs to move in, starting with a sheep, who's probably going to become a mascot if the aerial sheep service doesn't come in to airlift it to safety, and followed by the more nasty kind of mobs that try to shoot you with bows. Oh my goodness, this guy is... Yeah, we've been here a while. The uh, the local difficulty is getting up there. These things are spawning with crazy good armor now. Python GB is also juggling mobs this week, although it's more intentional. He's decided that the owner of an explosive shop should probably have a decent creeper farm placed in the idyllic surroundings of his beach resort. But even after lighting up all the caves nearby, it doesn't go smoothly. His AFK spot is too far away for the creeper AI to move them without the aid of water streams or helpful cats. Still, a little bit of troubleshooting, and he should be in business. That is, that is very, very strange indeed. I can only, I can only deduce that ZF is using up the mob cap by now. I wouldn't like to say. ZF, meanwhile, is farming a way different kind of monster at the newly established Lake Honk. So just to show you, you can see that one I just pushed in, he fell in the same spot as the other one, that's why their heads are now intertwined and making ge geometrical craziness. If you give him a little whack, um, it doesn't work. No. Yes, it's a villager farm, and yes, it too comes with a free trial of Adobe After Effects. Soon to be the new hub of all things villagery. Have you got a big nose and a large forehead? Yeah. Then you want to come down and reserve your space at Lake Honk. If you're planning on camping at Lake Honk though, make sure you steer clear of anyone wearing a hockey mask. TFC has achieved a lot this week, and yes, we mean advancements. After his regular elytra flights take him far enough to bag the 5k club advancement, he goes on a mission to fill out more of the custom quests. First, he adopts a strange diet of pufferfish and chicken, completes his namesake advancement for mining obsidian, flies to the jungle to place a bunch of emerald blocks, and grabs a few jungle saplings while he's in the neighbourhood. Cubfan has a different take on long distance travel as his nether hub wormhole tunnel takes shape over the span of three or four episodes. It's quite hypnotic when you fly through it, however we're yet to see someone who didn't build it try to squeeze through the leaps and turns. Judging by that 3x3 bottleneck, it might end in a block to the face. Cub once again modifies his shulker box storage system, upping it to version 3, whatever that means. Plus, we find out something quite amusing about him thanks to Jarvis's hamster wheel method of generating replies. 
We also find out even more about false symmetry later into the week, but that's thanks to her seemingly forgetting that she hit her 100th episode and just deciding to do the annual Q&A at episode 101. So it's a false 101 episode with all the answers to all the questions you always wanted to know but were too afraid to ask. Plus, she builds a campfire to tell scary stories at. No relation to the Q&A. So first up, we have a question from Sarah Donovan, who says, what am I most looking forward to in the next update? But one thing I am excited for is actually the, um, what do you call it? The Basically what I, what I thought of as underground leaves, basically. Uh, all of the like seaweed. Joe Hills has been camping on the walls of Castle Ravenloft this week to get more of the building done, although it gives him an opportunity to talk about the opposite happening, seeing a building get demolished in real life. Though after he sets up a new portal at the entrance to Red Sky Bay, he nearly gets demolished in-game as well. I think having this back part blocked off from creepers and such will buy people just a little bit time, you know, if they do uh, attract the attention of any unwanted- <gasps> Nope, that's not true at all. Not true at all. And finally there's Mumbo Jumbo, who has to demolish half of his lighthouse build when he realises it's a block too small, but once repairs are complete it blends in perfectly with the landscape opposite his base. The cliff below gets a boardwalk complete with a fish market, which Mumbo calls his first useless build. The base itself gets some useful upgrades to the farming area with a 2x2 spruce tree farm, which goes about as well as you'd expect from a Mumbo project. Especially because doing this is incredibly satisfying. I've broken it. But eventually, yields a tree he can be proud of. And that's just about it for this week's recap. Our writer is LoyXP, and my name is PixelRiffs. If you want to see what happens when me and a group of YouTubers crash a spaceship into the nether, check out my Forever Stranded Lost Soul series, which is linked in the end cards. Don't forget to leave a like to support the show, subscribe so you won't miss future recaps, and share this video with the Hermitcraft fans in your life. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.